Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Melissa, and if not, welcome back. Um, today on the Sew to Sell, we are going to make these awesome little reversible fabric baskets. Now you can sell these or you can give them away as a gift. You can use them as a gift basket or you can use them to organize your own goodies. I use mine as you've seen before. I've had a lot of comments and questions. I use them for my wonder clips. I have one next to my sewing machine and then I have one on my cutting table. You can't really have too many and they just for me this is just scrap fabric because it doesn't use much fabric and I have a lot of scraps. So here is a set of them that would be great to sell. You could sell them as a stacking set because this, these are the three sizes I'm going to include patterns for. That's the large, the medium, and the small. These, you can tell, are more rigid. These would be great for toys, and they're a little bit more durable for things that would be used all the time. I used a fusible fleece inside these, and I will include that in the description of this video. If you wish to make them more rigid like this, use fusible fleece. If you guys want me to make another video that shows using the fusible fleece, comment below and I can do that. The process is the same as making this one. Same exact bag. These are both the smalls. And this one's just got fusible fleece inside and this one has a midway interfacing inside. So, like I said, if you guys want me to do a separate video that shows using the, the fusible fleece, I can do that. Otherwise, the process is the same. It's just what you put inside of it. These are just uh, the ones I use for my sewing stuff. It's just a quilter's cotton with a mid-weight talon interfacing inside of it. And this one, since it's canvas, I didn't use any interfacing because the canvas is, is stiff enough. You could also use denim. If you have old jeans, you can cut the legs where we have a big enough square fabric. And you can use denim and, and then you can even use an old shirt. You can, you can make these out of anything. So don't get stopped because you don't have fabric or you don't have interfacing. There's a way around it. So this is the size I'm going to show you today to sew. And I will include the, the pattern sizes for all of these. So this one ends up being three inches deep, four and a half inches wide, and four and a half inches tall if you have it cuffed down like this by about an inch. Otherwise, it's about five and a half inches tall. Completely reversible, very fun to make, fun to sell, fun to give, fun to use. Your choice. All right, so let's get started. All right, so to make this little fabric basket, this is what you're gonna need. Two squares of an exterior fabric, two squares of an interior fabric, and four squares of Pellon 931 TD or a different mid-weight interfacing. You can also use an SF 101, um, just so it's a mid-weight, not too thick. A pair of scissors, or you can use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. And then I, I use this little ruler because we're gonna have to mark off our corners. So, and a marking pen. That is what you'll need. I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board and I'm gonna iron on the fusible fleece to the back, or the fusible interfacing to the back of all four pieces of fabric. Okay, so here are my pieces of fabric with the interfacing ironed on the back. My two exterior and my two interior panels. All of my panels are directional because I want the wood grain to go up and down and I want the owls to go right side up. <laughs> so that being said, we'll need to make sure we have the bottom corners. And I'm going to take the two exterior panels, right sides together. Top is to the top, bottom is down here. And I'm going to mark off an inch and a half. off both bottom corners. Okay. And then you're just gonna snip out the corner. Don't go into the fabric any farther than the corner. 
it's good to have nice sharp pointed scissors for things like this. And now we're going to do the same thing with the lining fabric. Alright, so we're going to start with the exterior fabric and again we, we still have the top facing up. So we're going to take the bottom and we're going to make a quarter inch seam down here. We're going to lock, lock in both sides, the start and stop. Okay, so we did that. We are going to finger press it open and then we're going to do an eighth inch seam or eighth inch stitch, eighth inch seam allowance on either side of this seam that we just made. Okay, so we're going to hand press, finger press open our seam allowance down here so that we can do an eighth inch uh, stitch on both sides of this seam we just made. And we do not need to lock this stitch. So that's one done and we'll flip it around and do the other side. This is going to help make it a real square flat bottom. Plus it looks nice. <laughs> All right, so now we have it nice and flat. You can see in the camera. We are going to then put right sides together and line up both of our sides. You can pin it if you want to or not. And I have a tag, so I'm gonna put my tag in closer to the bottom. That's where I like to put it. And we're gonna do another quarter inch seam allowance here. Lock the top, go nice and slow because it's important that your side seam allowance is the same on here as it is on here. So when you put the bags together, the circumference on the top is the same. So take your time on this, make sure it's nice and straight and then it's the same seam allowance on all pieces. Okay, I locked the top and I locked the bottom. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Same seam allowance. We're going to do the same process to the interior. I just want to make sure my pieces are completely lined up because I'm going to stitch the bottom together first. Right here, quarter inch seam allowance, locking the beginning and the end. Okay, now we're going to Finger press this open. You can uh, iron this if you rather. Sometimes the interfacing makes it a little bit more difficult to lay it flat. So we're gonna take it over and do an eighth inch on the bottom of this as well. Eighth inch seam allowance on either side of the seam. Now that one is done too, so I'm gonna snip all my strings. Hey guys, voiceover Melissa again. Uh, if you are enjoying this video and learning anything, if you wouldn't mind taking a second to hit the like button, that would be great. It just helps okay. uh, my channel and it helps Google with the algorithms. All right, thanks guys. Now we're gonna match up the side seams of the interior fabric. And we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance down both sides. Again, go nice and slow so you have the same even seam. Now 
now both of the side seams are done, I'm going to go back to the exterior fabric and I'm going to push out the square corners at the bottom that we cut. Right here. So I'm going to open up my seam again, my seam allowance. So it's like the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and use a wonder clip here to hold that open. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Open up the seam allowance. And so it matches. My seams on the bottom and the, the side are the same spot, right? Just going to add a, another clip up here to keep that seam allowance open. Because I will also want it open at the top when I go to put these bags together. So I'm going to take it to the machine here and I'm going to go ahead and stitch a quarter inch seam allowance across this raw edge. And I'm going to lock my stitch both at the beginning and the end. So that one is done. Go ahead and turn this exterior right side out and I'm going to push out my corners and look at how nice and square and flat that is. So we'll set the exterior part aside for a minute and then we're going to take the interior and we're going to do the same thing. Open it up and finger press the side seam open and clip it. Make sure they're lined up, the bottom seam and the side seam, and put a clip. And same as this one, I'm gonna go ahead and press this open with my fingers and put a clip on there. Then we have one more side here. Make sure our seams match up, clip it, and we will clip the top open as well. So our exterior and our interior fabric baskets are complete. We're going to take the exterior right side out and drop it into the interior right side in. So right sides are together. And just take a second to make sure that you're pushing down and lining up the corners in there. And the first place to start is to line up the side seams, the exterior and the interior side seams, and make sure that this side seam stays pressed open. And then I just put the clip back on. And after you get that done, you just work it around all your seams so that they're all lined up on there and we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew around the perimeter we're gonna leave about a two inch opening so I like to pin it so I don't forget
doesn't have to be too big, but it's gotta be big enough to turn the bag. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than that. Big enough to turn the bag the right way when we're done. So we're gonna start at this pin and we're gonna stitch all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance again until we get to the second pin. Um, locking your seam or locking your stitch again. done. Now we're going to take our little op opening right here and we're going to slowly gently pull the exterior fabric through that hole and then we're going to pull the interior fabric through the hole. And here we go. This is what you'll end up with. Something similar to that. Okay, then we're gonna stick our lining fabric into the exterior fabric and take some time and get all the wrinkles worked out and the corners pushed through. And then when you get to the top, you're gonna want to roll it in your fingers to get the lines Get the seam exposed, you know, as much to the top as you can. If you want, you could press it while it's open. Sometimes people will do that to help with this part now. I usually don't. I might just be impatient, I don't know. Or it's really hot in my sewing room and I don't feel like going to the sewing, to the um, ironing board, I don't know. But you see how I just roll it and you can get that seam exposed nicely, very nicely. I will take it and press it now before I stitch the top, the top stitch. My apologies here. I do need to get a different fabric to cover my um, ironing mat. I know it's kind of distorted a little bit because of its print, so Please bear with me and I will get a different fabric to cover it for next time. Thanks. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put my pin or my clip back on there just to hold that opening shut. So isn't that so cool and so simple and easy to do? Love making these bags. Okay. So now the goal is I'm going to do two stitches. I'm going to do one right up by the edge about an eighth of an inch down. And then I'm going to do another one about another eighth of an inch down from that one. Whatever you like and you think looks good, just make sure your first one includes um, both layers of fabric so you can close the, the opening. And when I start, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. stitch length at a three. That's what works well for me. 
on this machine. And you could just do one, one stitch around the top if you don't want to do two, but I'm going to do a second one. And this one, I'm going to do it about a quarter of an inch uh, down from the top. And I'm going to start and stop with lock again. So there's our overall bag, all complete. And then we're just gonna do a little fold down cuff on there. There's our bag. I absolutely, this, this owl fabric is one of my favorite and so is this wood fabric. And I believe that they're both discontinued. They're just some of my favorites. I actually cut apart something I had already made just to reuse this fabric. So there it is. If you have any questions, if I didn't show anything, if you want me to show it again, if you want me to show you how to do the fusible fleece instead of the interface midweight, let me know. But there's your tutorial. You can sew to sell these or you can give them as a gift. You can keep them for yourself and organize. The options are endless. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.